What's up baseball pitchers? In today's video, we're gonna go over six tips to improve your command, your accuracy, your control, whatever you wanna call it. Um, obviously, your command is one of the most important factors in being an effective pitcher. Uh, your velocity is obviously really important, and, but your mechanics, which everyone's talking about, how do I improve my mechanics? Your mechanics are there to serve two factors. Number one, they're gonna improve your command, your control, they're gonna improve your velocity, and then third, they're gonna give you the best chance to be healthy. So if you have bad mechanics, you can put more stress on your arm, and then it gives you a, probably an increased re risk of being injured. But today we're gonna to talk about how to improve your command, and a lot of it, I'm gonna give you just a quick glimpse, is mental. So the way you practice, the way you focus, all those sort of things. So if you're new to my channel, I'm a former pro pitcher, I've got tons of videos on pitching mechanics, pitching drills, the mental side of the game, strength training, arm care. So if you're new to my channel, Hit the like button after this video, subscribe, and check out all the other stuff that I have for you. So tip number one is improve your mechanics. But I'm not just gonna say improve your mechanics. The, the way you improve your mechanics is through having a good throwing routine and a bunch of consistent drills that you're gonna consistently do that are gonna help you hone your mechanics over time. So the best pitchers with the best command there's lots of different things going on, but one of them is that they're extremely repeatable. So their release point is gonna be very consistent from pitch one to pitch 99 on the afternoon. So your goal is that every pitch you throw is coming out of this tiny little window where if we were to put a cutout of a, you know, so we put a big piece of plywood in front of you, and we cut out a little hole for the ball to, to go through. If you had a pro pitcher and we cut out a hole right where he would release it on pitch number one, he'd probably be able to release pitch number 57 through that tiny little hole, just like a, like a carnival game. So when you improve your mechanics, which again comes down to finding a couple drills that really work for you, consistently doing them every time you play catch, every time you're in the bullpen, every time you're going through pregame, that's what eventually hones you to being extremely repeatable in your delivery. Pitching command tip number two. This is attacking the middle of the zone, especially early in the count. It's really hard to pitch when you're always behind the count. And it's really hard to get hitters to swing and miss and expand the strike zone when you're always behind the count. So the best thing you can do, especially as an amateur pitcher, which I know that's most of my audience right now, is on the first pitch, compete with the middle of the strike zone. It gives you the most margin for error. And if, you ha if, if you're not familiar with the term of margin for error, it's basically if you're gonna kick a soccer ball at a goal, say it was empty net, you would still aim for the middle of the net, right? Because it gives you a bunch of feet, maybe 10, 15 feet to the left to miss, a bunch of feet to the right to miss. You have the most margin for error, or the most room to miss and still get the job done. When you're just trying to throw a strike on the first pitch and get ahead in the count, aiming down the middle makes sense because you can miss in equal, equal distance in all directions and still throw a strike. If you're aiming on the corner, if you miss by only a couple inches, it's a ball because you're, you're aiming so fine to the edge of the plate. So aim down the middle earlier, really compete, you'll get quick outs and you'll maximize your chance of throwing a strike on the first pitch. So a lot of times command just comes down to poor tactics and poor strategy when we're getting too fine too early in the count. Pitching command tip number three is using the halves of the plate more than the corners or the thirds of the plate. So when we chop up the plate, we'll typically chop it into half and then we'll throw to the center of each of two halves, so inner half, outer half. And then we'll also chop, chop it into thirds. So we'll ignore the middle third and throw the inner third or outer third. And then obviously with, with really high level pitchers, college guys, pro pitchers, we're going to the corners of the plate a lot more. But young players, they, they get this wrong a lot and a lot of coaches get this wrong where they get ahead and then it's quickly 0-1, they're going to the corners of the plate. Again, back to tip number two, if you're always on the corner of the plate, you can be really accurate and miss off the plate by two, three inches and it's a ball. So even big leaguers, if you watch them, first pitch, they might go inner half, they might go outer half. They're not going to the black nearly as much as you think they are, I promise you. Even in pro ball, I was still utilizing inner outer half a lot, especially when I just wanted them to put the ball in play. Because I know that I'm never gonna hit my spot exactly, it's gonna be pretty rare. And so inner half becomes inner third, outer half becomes outer third. You give yourself a chance and a little more margin for error again to miss and still get the job done. So you really do yourself a disservice when you go from you know called first strike, then right to the corner. So tip number three here is don't use the thirds and the corners 
nearly as much until you get to 1, 2, or 0, 2. Command tip number four is having a mental, uh, a mental training practice. So one of the biggest things that you'll notice is that you can probably throw a lot more strikes in practice in the bullpen than you can in the games. And the reason is because your brain, your stupid, idiotic brain, gets in the way of your ability to throw strikes in a game. And the reason it does that is because there's now pressure, there's stakes, there's consequences, there's the fear of failure, there's all these different things that cloud your ability to do what you know how to do, what you practice to do. So you have to get into a mental training routine which allows you to start to better visualize yourself in pressure situations, to control your breathing in pressure situations so that when you get out there, it's more practice-like in the game. You're not as worried about what happens if they hit the, hit a double, what happens if you walk this guy, what happens if you don't pitch well in front of a scout. When you can control your breathing, control your emotions, control and slow the game down, you give yourself a better chance to get back into that bullpen state of mind where everything is easy and I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about throwing a ball because there, it's no big deal. It's just practice. The best pitchers in the world, they go out there and compete and they know there's a you know a packed ballpark full of fans, but they don't let themselves become overwhelmed and emotional with all of the the potential bad things that could happen. They could get you know they give up a have a really bad day and get sent back to the minors. That could be the end of their big league career. I mean, there's a lot of stakes high up in the in, in the highest levels of pro baseball. So when you start with maybe just 10 minutes of meditation per day, or you find a bunch of YouTube videos that really inspire you and you're consistently listening to, listening to older athletes talk about how they mentally prepare for a game, maybe you just get a little bit of quiet time, like five minutes by yourself before you go out and pitch, whatever it is, those little things are gonna add up over time where you can control and slow the game down and then your best self can be the self that pitches in the game when the pressure is on and even in low pressure situations there's still pressure because you you know fresh inning you got a big lead you don't want to walk the first guy you don't want to fall behind those are still micro pressures that add up and i know because i did this my whole career and me just like everyone else we make it harder on ourselves so tip number four here is start a mental training practice it's absolutely critical to helping you be the best version of yourself out there on the field tip number five that's really going to help you um, improve your command, com improve your control is having a must do mindset rather than a want to do mindset. So for me, in my last couple years of my baseball career, I had the best command of my whole life. And my, I started continuing to trend better and better each year, not because I kept like improving my mechanics every year or throwing harder every year, but because my focus and my intensity and my visualization of each pitch improved quite a lot. So. What I mean by this is, when you get to really high levels of baseball, you're aware that if you don't make a big pitch, it could have major impact in, on your career. If I don't pitch well in spring training, I could be cut and be done. Um, and if I string together a bad couple weeks, I could be done forever. And so every pitch really, really counts. And there's a major difference between young players where they just go out there and I wanna throw the ball in the inner half or I wanna make this pitch on the outside corner and the seasoned pro who understands, if I don't make this pitch, we might lose this ball game. It could come down to one pitch and I could lose my career, I could be off this team tomorrow if I, make an, if I have another bad outing essentially. So every pitch becomes important. And so basically what I'm saying here is that your mindset needs to be every pitch you throw, you're mentally locked in, you know what you're throwing, you know where it's going, and every fiber of your being is saying, I have to execute this pitch on the outside corner. This ball is going to that spot. Now, it's not to say that you're adding pressure and making it harder on yourself, but it's, I'm gonna make this pitch. That's my spot, the ball's going there. There's not like, I hope it goes. I'm not just picking it up and throwing it. There's a really intense focus where it's like a laser beam between me and the spot that I'm trying to throw. And that's a major difference. It's an intangible, hard to describe difference between low level pitchers and high level pitchers but it's a very, very real thing. Command training is not just this like, I'm gonna practice by throwing into a net with different targets on it. That's all well and good, but that's not really what command is. That's not really what explains why Clayton Kershaw can throw the ball into a Dixie Cup for his entire career at the highest level of baseball and someone else who has very similar good mechanics can't. 
There's so many mental and mind body, mind body connection factors. So my last uh, pitching command tip here is throwing more. And this seems really obvious, but throwing more and also throwing different pitches. So when you go out there and uh, you're playing catch, you're having a flat ground, you're having a bullpen, throw more change-ups, throw more two-seamers, throw more four-seamers, manipulate the baseball. Having a strong connection with the baseball and, and understanding how you release the ball off your fingertips on each pitch, that's really critical. So if you just go out there and play catch and you're not really thinking through it, you're not going to get the same results long-term as a pitcher who goes out there and every time he plays catch, he's throwing his four-seamer, he's throwing his two-seamer, he's, he's throwing his change-up, you know, 20, 30% of the throws in a throwing session, and he's constantly teaching his body how to feel and manipulate the baseball in different ways because ultimately our fingertips and our hands, these are the things that are directing. These fine little motor movements are what make the difference between ball and strike in and out, you know, just off the plate or just on the plate. So the more you throw and the more you mix your stuff, your stuff up when you're playing catch, the better and stronger that mind-body connection is between you and your mechanics, your arm, your release point, all that stuff. So it's a really, really underrated thing, but the best pitchers and the guys with the best command are also players who've loved throwing since they were little kids. They love to throw. They throw more than anyone else. They go out, they find a brick wall if they don't have a partner. These players are always throwing. So if you're struggling with your command, really look yourself in the eye and say, if someone was observing me from afar, you know, there's like a little drone circling overhead watching what I do every day, um, would they say that I really love throwing? Do I throw a lot or do I just throw a couple of days a week and when I feel like it, I go out there? Because there's a very big difference, again, between a kid like me and a kid like so many of my teammates, how they grew up. I was out throwing a ball against the wall every day, playing backyard baseball every day, throwing a lot and just getting to know my body and doing all that other stuff. The last tip I'm giving you, give a bonus tip here, is throw from different arm angles. So Everyone, I think, loves practicing like the Derek Jeter throw, you know, making all these uh, exciting, fancy throws that you see infielders make on TV. Throwing is a complex task, and there's lots of different ways to throw a baseball. So even though during your throwing routine, you want to be up and over the top or whatever it is, and you want to be extremely repeatable in your pitching mechanics, I think it's really good for your development. And again, developing that mind-body connection, understanding where your hand is and your arm is in space by making different types of throws. So don't just only throw from your pitching mechanics. Run around the field, make plays, like make playing catch fun. And the more you get good at throwing and hitting your target on the run, running to your left, running to your right, running behind you, throwing from sidearm, throwing from sub sidearm, throwing over the top, um, the more you get comfortable hitting a target in all these different improvised ways, the more your body is going to respond. And again, build that mind-body connection that says, I know where I'm in space. I know how to get this baseball where it needs to go, okay? So I know this was a long video, but I think command is really important. So if you stuck with me to the end, I appreciate it. Um, command is a, it's a hot topic in baseball with all the objective stats and the, and the tech and the tracking and the video. People are trying to figure out how do we improve command because it's the hardest thing to improve. And there's a lot of players who just seem to grow up and when they're young, they can just throw, they can just throw strikes. And there's a lot of other players who when they improve their mechanics, they still can't throw strikes. And so we, ha we all have to kind of understand that there's a lot between the ears um, that accounts for improving your command as a pitcher and getting the ball where you want it to go. So I think everyone needs to take a deep look at their own habits, what they do, their mental game, how focused they are, the way they prepare. And those are really big, underrated, often intangible factors in your command. All right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button for me, subscribe to the channel, share with a friend, and I'll see you in the next one.